Her name is Stelia, man. She got an interview show. And I'm her first guest because she's smart, you know. So if you want some tea on Betty, you better tune in. Check it out on YouTube. If you don't, it's a sin. Hi, welcome to Got Dragged But Still Standing. I'm your host, Stelia Mann, and throughout the next few weeks, we'll be diving in to learn even more about each and every one of our competitors. Now, if you're watching this, it means one of three things. Either one, you've been watching Get Dragged and you wanna know more about our queens. Two, you just happen to stumble upon this video randomly, and if that's true, first of all, how the hell did you get here? What have you been searching? You need to clear your history. Or three, your family, and I'm forcing you to watch. Hi, Mom! Of course, we had to start off this interview series with none other than the Betty Whitecastle. Betty, good afternoon. It's so nice to see you. Good afternoon, Stelia. Thank you for having me on your little program. Oh, I'm happy to answer a few interview questions. Okay, Betty, so first things first, the question everyone wants to know is, just how long have you been doing drag? Oh, sweetie, long before you were on this planet. <laughs> no way, there's no, no. Are you serious? Oh, yes, and I didn't really take it seriously at first. It's really only about the past decade where I really honed my Betty White Castle persona and put her to good use. Okay, so throwing it back to way back when, what first inspired your drag? Well, one of the first queens I saw way back in the 80s, before I knew who she was, before the world knew who she was, I got to see RuPaul Charles perform Supermodel of the World right in Tompkins Square Park. I remember seeing RuPaul do her song on stage and thinking, that bitch is singing her own songs. Oh, that inspired me right there. I thought, ooh, I'm gonna get started on this. Okay, so we've all realized by now, if we've been watching Get Dragged, that Betty White Castle original songs are top tier music entertainment. Now, Betty, I've told you this, but now I'm ready to tell the world that, despite what I said at the start of this competition about your rap, Please never rap again. it has become one of my favorite songs, period. So, did you have any other entertainment background before you started doing drag? One of my first big gigs before becoming Betty White Castle, well, decades ago, honey, I was Big Bird in Sesame Street Live. Yes, indeed, honey, I got to travel all 50 states, all the provinces of Canada, even did a special private show for the president of the Philippines. So um, I've traveled the world as Big Bird and now I wanna travel the world as Betty White Castle. Really? Okay, I'm not really that surprised because every time I've seen you, Betty, you've constantly been wearing at least one feather. How has drag impacted your social life outside of drag? Well, <clears throat> I was concerned when I started really getting into it that my husband was going to be objecting about how much time I was spending on drag, and um, he has been very supportive, so I am so thankful that my husband is on Team Betty. I love that. That's so cute. Yes, Mr. White Castle. Tell me, Stelia, does doing drag affect your dating life at all yet? Um, drag might would affect my dating life if I had a dating life but I have promoted myself and our little show on each and every dating website I can find. Yep, if you're swiping into my DMs on Grindr or Tinder, you're probably gonna get a link to Get Dragged. So I wouldn't really say drag has affected my dating life, but my dating life has affected drag. Okay, so since we're on the topic of drag wiggling its way into our personal lives, I have one more question about it. Have you ever experienced any pushback because of your drag career? Well, I wouldn't say that I've gotten any pushback, but I did get nervous for a minute when, uh, you see, I'm an elementary school teacher by day, and uh, one of my former students found out about Betty White Castle and uh, posted a picture of me on Snapchat and said, look what Mr. Mitchell does. All of a sudden I had like 200 new followers overnight and got all excited about that. And then I'm looking and like, oh my gosh, these are all former students. I got in a panic. I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna lose my job. And so I 
told the principal about Betty White Castle, how she does a lot of work for the LGBT community and she's up in front of the Capitol doing shows and all that information. And I would have to say I was very impressed with how supportive the school district has been. Thankfully, we've come a long way since uh, I started doing drag decades ago. I'm so glad that you didn't lose your job. I mean, that would be terrifying. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a little invasive question. Who is your favorite competitor? You don't have to say me because I'm here, but I am kind of expecting it. But like I said, choose who you want. Just be careful. <laughs> so you want me to pick a favorite competitor? <laughs> to use Elvira's language. Oh, well, um, I don't know that I could really pick one favorite. Honestly, I have really enjoyed getting to know all of you girls. And um, I would say the only way I could sort of do that at first when all I knew was your names was sort of uh, scout you out on your social media. And I would say that one queen's social media that really impressed me was Gogo -Go Fetches. Miss Gogo, -Go, she had a whole impressive body of work. So really all of, all of the contestants have been fabulous, but if I had to pick one, I would probably be Gogo. -Go. I love Gogo -Go as well. During filming, she was the girl I talked to the most. We kind of talked about the challenges, what we were gonna do, what we were thinking, how we were feeling, and that was really helpful. So no hard feelings for not picking me. I guess if you had to pick somebody else, she could pick my friend Gogo. -Go. All right, Stelia, I've got some questions for you. Ooh, the interviewer gets interviewed. I love this, let's hear them. I'm curious, Stelia, what elements of pop culture most influence your drag? I've always been a really big fan of Disney and Broadway, and I love, 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 love having outfits that are inspired by characters from my childhood. Because let's face it, it wasn't that long ago that I was a child. Um, today's look is inspired by Daphne from Scooby-Doo. Um, it's a Daphne meets modern day Ariana pop star look. So um, that's a good example. Um, but yeah, um, anything Broadway or Disney, fairy tale, cartoony, I like to kind of twist it and make it its own grown up version. Well, Steely, I can see that you are very adept with a needle and thread yourself. I wonder, do you enjoy making looks for other drag queens? Oh, this is a good question. Um, I honestly don't have any other drag friends. Until Get Drag, the only drag queen that I knew and talked to was myself. Stelia, thank you so much for the interview. I have really enjoyed chatting with you and getting to know you a little bit better. And, um, We've got to do something again creatively soon. Thank you so much, Betty. Um, I'm so thankful that you agreed to do this little interview with me. Um, I'm a huge Betty Whitecastle fan, so I am hoping that after this interview, um, there'll be some more Betty Whitecastle fans because I've got to know you a little bit better, but I can assure you of this, that none of them will love you as much as I do. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope that you've learned a little more about our fellow queen, Miss Betty Whitecastle. Be sure that you're watching Get Dragged because we'll probably be talking about it in future episodes if these other girls want to talk to me. I don't know if they do or not, but we'll see. So yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Make sure you're watching Get Dragged on Elvirus' YouTube channel.